Now we'll go to the step two of our discussion. And in step two, uh, we are going to introduce the ideas of a spring and a dashboard. Um, now, eventually our goal is to build a simple model of viscoelasticity and uh, we are going to do these through uh, so-called fundamental uh, structural elements. Okay, so our goal is to um, to build a simple, actually not only one model, but eventually a class of simple models of viscoelasticity. Simple but fundamental enough. So, and we do that here by recalling um, fundamental structural elements. Now here the keyword is maybe on structural. What I'm about to draw has a meaning in actual structural design and analysis and we understand what they are from our daily experience. The first structural element that I'm going to talk about is simply a spring. Let's draw a helical spring. So in this caricature of a helical spring, so I can support the spring at the bottom, I can fix it to a surface and eventually what I can do is I can pick the top point or a surface that's attached to it and I can displace the top surface through an amount of displacement along that direction which I'll just call U presently and then I am interested in the amount of force that I measure as a result of that displacement and I know that the force is proportional to the displacement and the constant of proportionality is the spring constant and I measure a force. Now that force is a force that only depends on the amount of displacement and not how fast I induce that displacement and therefore it's like an elastic force. To remind me of that I am going to throw in a E. So K okay, here is our spring constant. Remember spring constant is just like if this were a solid beam it would be a constant that depends on the length, the elastic modulus and the cross-sectional area. Ultimately among those only the Young's modulus, the elastic properties and material property, everything else is a structural property and therefore the spring constant is eventually not a material parameter of course, it's a structural constant which is influenced by a number of things. Now going forward now, I'm going to talk about another structure and this structure is called a dashboard. So this is our spring and on the right we have now what is called a dashboard. Now a dashboard is eventually a, I will idealize it as a structure where there is a cylinder and let's say that cylinder is also fixed to a surface and it is eventually going to be filled with some fluid up to a certain point but before I do that or after I do that I'm going to throw in also a piston. Okay. And so that is a piston um, which has a surface area, a wider portion which tightly fits the inside of the cylinder but it has certain holes on it. Okay. So I'm just again making a caricature of um, reality so that's a circular plate with holes. Okay. And, um, and, and here the dashboard or the cylinder is filled with some fluid which has a certain viscosity, it's a Newtonian viscous fluid let's say. So that's a viscous fluid. Okay. And I deform the, I pull on the rod of this uh, plate and I can move the cylinder up, uh, uh, that plate up and down and I will do that with a certain rate or velocity u dot, that's the rate at which I displace it. Okay, um, So that is a setup of a so-called dashboard and um, one way to imagine this structurally, we understand the spring quite well, but this would be for instance a bicycle pump. A bicycle pump 
is like a uh, dashpot, is a dashpot. And what we know from a bicycle pump is, uh, is that it doesn't matter how much you remove, how much you move this, um, the, the plate, in other words, the handle of the pump, if you do it extremely slowly, you can move it as much as you like, you're not going to get any force out of it. It's going to be very easy. Okay? But if you try to do it fast, that's when, in fact, you realize that you do some work because there is eventually, uh, structurally, that's the way the bicycle pump um, functions. And we know that the faster we want to push the handle, the more force we have to exert. Okay? So, so the force that we have to exert to move this handle is a quantity that is proportional not to the absolute amount of displacement of the handle but to the rate at which you do it or in other words the velocity and there is a constant of proportionality which is called the damping coefficient. Now the damping coefficient just like the spring constant is not a material property the viscosity of the fluid certainly influences the damping coefficient, but additionally, the cross-sectional area of the plate, the geometry of the holes, etc., everything is going to eventually contribute to the damping coefficient. So it's ultimately a structural property. But the force com that comes out is a force that is very much related to the behavior of the underlying viscous fluid. And to remind myself of that, I will put a V. So it's like a pure viscous force because the force only depends on the, um, on the rate of displacement. So now what I am going to do is I am going to build, combine these two fundamental structural elements to build a new structure which is not very trivial. And we can combine them in, in, in many different ways, but I'm going to just give one, again, a motivational example, and I'm going to build the, um, the car suspension system model. And the suspension system, so it consists of many things eventually, but ultimately what we have is the chassis of the car, and to the chassis is going to be connected the tire, okay, which goes onto some support, okay, so you connect your support to that point, the, the, the way it is caricaturized, so that's where the tire or the wheel goes, and the wheel is not directly connected to the chassis through some solid, let's say, piece of steel, but actually, in between, you put some spring and in combination with that you put a dash pot okay. so the purpose of the uh, spring is, is so that you um, eventually the, the, so that eventually the wheel can move up and down um, and eventually the dashpot is there so that once it moves up and then down, you don't oscillate forever as you drive, but eventually the motion is damped out through the damping coefficient or the damping behavior of the, of the, of the um, dashpot. Okay? So, so this is the caricature of such a setup. Reality is not far from it. Uh, but certainly it is a behavior now. So in other words, the overall behavior of the connection of the wheel to the chassis is a behavior that is neither this nor that. Because if I go ahead and move this wheel upwards by a certain amount u, okay, so I'm going to get a force that is certainly going to be related to the amount of displacement of that I impose, the amount of displacement that I put on the wheel, but it also matters how much, how fast I do it. If I do it slowly, the contribution of the force from the dashpot is not going to be important. If I do it very fast, it's going to be important. So the total force that that the wheel or the chassis feels as a result of the motion of the wheel depends not only on the amount of displacement but also on the rate of displacement and that total force it's a sum of the two forces because these are acting acting in parallel um, so the first force is ku and the second force is cu dot so the first one is a pure elastic 
behavior just like a solid material the other one is a pure viscous behavior uh, just like a pure or idealized fluid and now I go ahead and combine them in this in this um, structural model that's composed of two fundamental models and I have a behavior that is neither elastic nor viscous but it is called viscoelastic okay and so that's fluid plus viscous like behavior that we have um, discussed um, in the previous slide that we have mentioned in the previous slide so that is how viscoelasticity ultimately arises naturally in modeling uh, when you're dealing at the structural level now what we're going to do next is we're going to be influenced by these fundamental structural elements of a spring and a dashboard these do have structural level um, importance and meaning and eventually the constants that govern their behavior are structural constants where material parameters certainly contribute to but it's not only the material parameters also the structural dimensions um, also contribute but eventually what's important is that we end up with a behavior that is a combination of the two structural uh, elements and that behavior is a behavior that immediately emerges from this picture. I put the two structural elements in parallel and hence the net force is a sum of the two. Of course, you could have put them in series. That could be a different structural system. Maybe not directly a car suspension system, but it would be a structural system if I put them in series. And the amount of force you measure uh, as a when a certain displacement is imposed at the end and a certain rate would be different because you wouldn't sum the forces then well um, you can you don't have to put a single spring you can put multiple springs multiple dashboards I could have connected another spring here perhaps right so once I have these structural fundamental structural elements I can go to a more complicated picture and try to think about the amount of force measured on that more complicated system for a given amount of displacement and displacement rate or velocity uh, based on the picture that I have. In this case, that's the picture. That's the first step I could take. Another one would be again serious, but there are more complicated pictures. However, for that picture, that's what I have. Okay, and that's a motivation enough for viscoelastic type of material behavior. What we have to notice now is that that's not the only picture there are other pictures right uh, now we want to move to the next step and in that next step we want to be motivated by that discussion and now go to the not the structural level we want to go down to the material level and we want to model viscoelastic not structural but material uh, behavior okay so this is viscoelastic structural behavior and now we want to look at viscoelastic material behavior.